Hello and welcome back to Sujitra's Biology. Today we are going to discuss about the topic that is the GPCR PLC signaling. So let's start. GPCR PLC signaling. This is the plasma membrane of the cell. Okay. This is the plasma membrane of the cell. Now it is GPCR present here. Okay. We have already discussed about the GPCR, how the GPCR protein is. It is, it transpands the membrane seven times. Okay. If this is the GPCR, it transpands the membrane seven times. This is the N terminal, this is the C terminal. You already know that. Okay. Now, here is G protein, the trimeric G protein. This is G protein. Okay. G protein. Having three subunits alpha, beta, and gamma. So initially it is bind to GDP. Alpha subunit of the G protein is bound to GDP. When the alpha subunit of G protein is bound to GTP, it is in inactive form. It is in inactive form. Okay. When a ligand, okay, when a primary messenger, okay, or the first messenger comes and binds to a GPCR, G protein coupled receptor. This is the receptor on the membrane. When ligand comes and binds to this, this gets activated. Earlier it was inactive. Once the ligand is bound to this, it gets activated. Okay. So GPCR is activated. Now what happens? This activated GPCR will add GTP to the alpha subunit and it will remove the GDP. Okay, so GTP will bound here and GDP is removed. Once GTP is bound to the alpha subunit, it becomes active. The G protein becomes active. Okay, so once the G protein is active, there is another protein or uh, element present on the plasma membrane that is the PLC okay it is PLC PLC stands for phospholipase C okay now this alpha GTP will come and bind to this this alpha GTP comes and binds to this now this becomes activated once PLC is activated, it will break PIP2 into DAG and IP3. Okay. DAG and IP3. Now, what is PIP2? This breaks, PLC breaks PIP2 into DAG and IP3. DAG and IP3 are secondary messengers. Secondary messengers. Okay. Secondary DAG stands for DAG stands for diacyl glycerol and IP3 stands for IP3 stands for inositol citol 145 triphosphate okay DAG stands for diacylglycerol and IP3 stands for inositol 1,4,5-triphosphine. Now what is PLC? Sorry, PIP2. PIP2 stands for phosphatidyl inositol citol biphosphate. Okay biphosphate 4 5 biphosphate okay so i'm removing this this is the plasma membrane this is the cell area okay cell area. now the cell has er this is the er endoplasmic reticulum as you all know endoplasmic reticulum is rich in calcium 2 plus okay so there are a lot of 
calcium ions in the ER. But they are trapped inside the ER. Okay. So what happens? It, it also has a channel. That is IP3 calcium channel. Okay. IP3 calcium channel. Now this IP3 will come and bind to this channel. IP3 comes and binds over here. <coughs> now this leads to the opening of the channel and calcium ions come out. Once the calcium ions come out, the calcium binds with calmodulin. Calmodulin. Okay. These two will bind to form calcium Calmodulin complex. Calmodulin complex. Or the CC complex. Okay. Double C complex. Calcium calmodulin complex. Now the CC complex combines with cam kinase. The CC complex combines with cam kinase to form CCC complex. Three C's because of calcium, calmodulin and cam kinase. Okay. Now as it is a kinase, its activity is to phosphorylate another protein. So the CCC complex will phosphorylate any protein. Phosphorylates protein. So it will phosphorylate any protein and it will activate that protein. And it will show cellular response okay that will show cellular response so this was one of the uh, one of the pathways the next one could be this was the er calcium was released because due to the opening of the calcium IP3 channel. So the calcium IP3 channel, it got opened when the IP3 bound to it. Okay. So the calcium, we have seen that the calcium binds with the calmodulin to form CC complex. Then the CC complex combines with the cam kinase to form CCC complex. The CCC complex phosphorylates any protein and activates that protein, any protein, okay. Now the activated protein shows the cellular response. This was one of the pathways in GPCR PLC signaling. Or something can happen like this calcium, this calcium binds with IP3, okay. This calcium binds with IP3. Sorry, calcium binds with this calcium binds with another protein that is PKC. Okay, PKC. Once this binds with PKC, there are some changes in PKC, and what happens? The PKC present in the cytosol will move towards the plasma membrane. It will move towards this. The calcium when when calcium is bound to PKC, the PKC is still in inactive form. Okay. It, this complex goes to the plasma membrane, near to the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane has already DAG, okay, which was produced by the breakdown of PIP2. Now, this, these will combine and it will get activated. The PKC will get activated once it combines over here. When PKC combines with DAG, calcium present here okay now pkc gets activated now pkc is what kinase so it can phosphorylate protein okay any protein what it will do phosphorylate that protein phosphorylates means it adds a phosphate group to that protein so this pkc got activated it will activate or phosphorylate any other protein the phosphorylated protein becomes active. This protein is now active. So this active protein shows cellular response. 
okay this is the another path so let's simplify the things we have already seen that there was gpcr there was g protein once the gtp was bound to the alpha subunit of g protein it got activated and bound to the plc okay the plc broke pip2 into pip2 was broken into dag and ip3 okay this is all here it was gpcr g protein the plasma membrane the plasma membrane so pip2 was broken into dag and ip3 we have seen that now i'm explaining it once again here it was er rich in calcium ions ip3 comes and binds to the channel called calcium ip3 channel once ip3 comes and binds to this channel calcium r released from er because of the opening of the channel okay this calcium binds with cal modulin cal modulin to form cc complex cc complex this cc complex combines with cam kinase cam kinase to form ccc complex okay this cc complex activates or phosphorylates protein protein here it is so the cc complex phosphorylates adds a phosphate group to the protein any protein okay this was inactive once the phosph phosphate group is added to the protein it becomes active protein became active now it shows cellular response cellular response this was one of the pathways the next pathway was or else the calcium can bind to pkc okay pkc it can bind to the pkc calcium bound to the pkc now the pkc goes to the plasma membrane where dag was present pkc calcium binds to the dag now pkc got activated pkc comes here and binds it got activated now it can phosphorylate any other protein protein it phosphorylates any protein adds phosphate group okay now it can show cellular response just as we have seen here okay so this was the gpcr plc pathway So this was all about the GPCR PLC signaling. If you like the video, do like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.